Hi, this is John Margis from the Philadelphia Fire. And Scott Hogwood with the Philadelphia Fire. And you are listening to White Canes Connect. PA Federationists, welcome to another episode of White Canes Connect, presented by the National Federation of the Blind of Pennsylvania. My name is David Goldstein. I am the treasurer of the Keystone Chapter. Joining me today is co-host and vice president of the Keystone Chapter, Lisa Bryant. Lisa, how are you today? Doing well, David, and very nice conversation we had with John Margis and Scott Hogwood of the Philadelphia Fire, which is a beep baseball team. And we will hear all about what is beep baseball for those of you who don't know. I'm glad to have them explain it to me because I was not sure of it as much as I like sports. It was great to get the lowdown on how everything is set up in the field and what goes on. I knew a little bit, but today they really give you everything you need to know about the sport, and it was great to have them on. And make sure you listen to the entire show because there is a call to action. Let's take a listen. John and Scott, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure. Yep, we appreciate it. And John, Scott, we want to thank Dakota for uh, recommending both of you to the show. Perfect timing it's, as it is play ball season. <laughs> Love to hear more about the Philadelphia Fire. But first, let's hear about you two. Uh, John, why don't we start with you? Give us a little bit of a brief bio and um, whatever you want to share about your visual impairment. If, if I'm not even sure if you have one, actually, but... Tell us about you. And then Scott, same question. No. Yep. I, I, I definitely have one. Um, so uh, I grew up playing sports uh, my whole life, actually. Uh, and then when I was about 14 years old, uh, I actually got hit in the chest with a ball in the outfield playing regular baseball. Okay. Uh, I was unsure why. Um, a few more would come out and I would be able to catch them. Um, but then I would lose another one in the sun. Uh, so at that point I went to the, the eye doctor and they gave me glasses and the glasses did absolutely nothing. Um, so they eventually sent me to a low vision specialist. And at that point I was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa. Um, so basically, you know, it's progressed over the years. I was still kind of, kind of able to hang on to some sports through high school. Um, I played football. Up until 18, uh, probably wasn't the safest thing at that point, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, after a while, it took a long time, longer than than I would have liked. I wish I would have found uh, this game and some other some other adaptive sports a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was 28 years old, I was uh, at work at um, Vision Corps, which is a nonprofit agency uh, oh, yeah. in Pennsylvania, um, and I, I'm still currently employed there today. And believe it or not, uh, there was this guy there named Scott who kept bugging me <laughs> coming to play a game called beat baseball and goal ball, another sport for the blind. And uh, it took him probably six months or a year to get me out there, maybe even a tad longer than that. But he didn't give up. And eventually he did get me to come out. And I really I'm really glad he did because it's changed my life um, mm. in a positive way so much. So. Mm -hmm. So Scott, same question to you. Tell us how tell us a little bit about you and then we'll get into how you both got into Philly Fire. All right. Um I also team RP, retinitis pigmentosa. <laughs> um and and as you know, uh, I know Dakota pretty well. She's one of my five <laughs> children and uh two of my children also um have retinitis pigmentosa. Um, I, unlike John, I was diagnosed at the age of three. So we knew what I had. Um, so we were prepared for a long time. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and then over time it just, uh, slowly deteriorated. And, uh, I think about the age of 30 was when it really got to the point where, I, I knew I was in trouble, so I yeah. uh, I, I started getting the uh, getting the things that I needed because when I was eighteen, nineteen, 
20, I thought I could still drive a car and I didn't mm-hmm. need to learn Braille and, mm-hmm. and any of that stuff. And then, um, you know, once w- once it, it dwindled to, to a certain point, then I realized, ah, maybe I should start using this cane and before somebody beats me up for running into them and, and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and stuff like that. But, um, yeah. You know, I uh, one thing I got to say is I'm, I'm I'm glad I brought John in to beat baseball. He's one of our all stars on our team now, so that was a blessing in disguise. I never knew it, yeah. and um, you know that's that's my RP situation. I'm 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 married. I have five children, and mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, that's that's my story pretty much. So, so what you're I, saying uh, is your new talent when you. I guess heard it. I guess a blind person can't know talent when they see it, but you knew it when you heard it and you recruited the right guy. Well, the the first thing he told me, well, we were outside chit chat and, and he told me his little brother was a standout football player. He didn't tell me he was, but I'm like, <laughs> hmm. you know, a lot of times that's genetic. So, you know, Hey John, why don't you come on out and play a little bit, you know? And uh, so he, he's, I don't know if, if, if his brother's got some of his talent or he's got some of his brother's talent, but his, uh, his brother used to be uh, a part of the Pittsburgh Steelers. So that was oh. that, that right there is said enough, you know, Hey, come on, let's give it a try. You can't be with so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so it all worked out to, uh, to, uh, to our benefit. That's for sure. So which of you can tell us when did Philly fire actually start? So I can tell you, we we kind of reemerged as Philly Fire in okay. 2018, but there was a team prior to that, and Scott, I don't know that was called the BSO Wolfpack. I'm not sure if you know exactly what year they they came around or about. We it used to be called they used to be the Whiz Kids. Even prior to that, that's uh, that was the first uh, jersey that Greg Gonterek had given me was a Whiz Kids jersey. And and then they changed up and they were the Pennsylvania Wolf Pack and uh, that that started I don't know what year I started around 2010 2011 mm-hmm. and uh, and it was Pennsylvania Wolf Pack at that time and um, you know that that to me that's that's about as much as I know I know it's been around a while but uh, I'm not sure the name changes and I think it went to Philly Fire in what maybe 2015 or 2016. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess it's probably somewhere in the late '90s or early 2000s that the program officially got started. And, um, I don't know for sure, but it, it used to be part of an organization called PABA, which was Pennsylvania mm-hmm. Association for Blind Athletes, I believe. Okay. And um, it's shifted over to what is now called the Blind Sports Organization, based right. out of. Uh, Philadelphia, and under that umbrella, we have the Philly Fire Beat baseball team. They have a a goalball team who's the the current name I think is the BSO Jones. Um, <laughs> they have um, some youth activities, and they do judo as well. So that's the kind of underlying nonprofit organization at the top of the right, right. Yeah, there. I wanted I had that down as a note to to talk about the uh, blind sports organization. And and Scott, I guess since you've been uh, you recruited John in, tell us for those that don't understand what is beat baseball. Ah, uh, beat baseball is a, a modified uh, game of baseball for people who are visually impaired and blind. Um, it's made up of their their co-ed teams. Um, mm-hmm. They range from the ages of, I think, the youngest guy that's actually played in the World Series, actually played on on one of our teams. His, uh, I think, he was twelve at the time, and I think oh, wow. one of one of the oldest gentlemen that's still out there playing is sixty three. Hmm. Um, so it it ranges from 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 whenever you can pick up a bat to whenever you can't pick up a bat anymore and uh and and uh, your pitcher and your catcher are sighted uh okay. they're on your team unlike regular baseball um typically you know the pitcher's job when you think of baseball and softball is to strike you out but this mm-hmm. is totally opposite their job is to hit your bat um the pitcher and the catcher use a cadence uh that 
that you eventually, you know, you practice and you get the timing down. They use a cadence and they say set, ready, pitch. Mm-hmm. And and we we practice every week about three, three or four hours. And we, um, you know, we get the body memory and the cadence and the and the practice down to start ripping the ball. And uh, there's six starters on a team Mm -hmm. um, on the field at one time. Um, There's four volunteers that are on the field at one time. You have two spotters that are in the field and, and you have your two sighted uh, pitcher and catcher. Um, Mm -hmm. And the two spotters are also sighted and defensively, um, the field is broken into zones, and each zone is numbered. Um, teams do it different ways all over the country. Um, the Philly Fire, we we do a one through six, where your one zones are on the outside, closer to the bases, and the six is straight up the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, each defensive player is in a different zone, a different area. When the balls hit, uh, one of the spotters, uh, whether it's left field spotter or right field spotter, will call one number. Um, they'll kind of get you going in the right direction. And uh, and then your job is to listen for the beeping ball um, wow. and, and get possession of the ball before the runner gets to the base. If you do, it's an out. If the runner gets to the base before uh, the fielder gets possession of the ball, it's a run. Um, the beep baseball itself has a beeping sound Mm -hmm. and the bases have a buzzing sound. There's a first base and there's a third base. There's no second base. And when the, when the pitcher says set ready pitch, one of those two bases will start buzzing. You don't know which one it's going to be until you, you make contact with the ball that was actually one of the hardest things that I had to get used to because you, uh, you get up there and you, you've played regular ball before and your, your, your instincts just tell you to run the first base. And so mm-hmm. you start running the first base and then you realize, Oh no, third base is beeping. So you got to <laughs> stop where you're going and then head to third. So, uh, and, and the bases are made up of about a three foot pylon, like almost like a, uh, um, a tackle dummy in football. So we get to go down mm-hmm. there and just hit it as hard as we want to hit it and tackle it. And <laughs> uh, we get down and dirty and we have a blast. So, it sounds uh, so fun. <laughs> is, is there anything I'm missing there, John? I, I, you know? No, I don't. I mean, you said how the, so the spotters in the field, um, they can, all they can say is that one number. They can't say, John, the ball's to your right, John, the ball's to your left, but the, okay. the defense can communicate with each other. And that's really important. So we do that. If a ball goes by me on the left, I'll say, Scott, by me left, as I hear it going mm-hmm. by me. So the defenders can say whatever they want whenever, but those sighted, those sighted spotters can only say one number and that's it. That's the only thing they can say out there. So if you hit the ball and like Scott said, he started to run to first and now you got to, oh my God, I got to go to third. Do you have to backtrack or can you cut across? How does that work? You can cut across and the pitcher can get out of the way, but it's probably too. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably going to be out. Okay. And if you get you... To catch the ball in the air on defense, it's three outs automatically. I think it's only happened a few times. Okay. I have to tell you a funny story. I I played Little League Baseball, and because I couldn't see very well, they were afraid to put me in the infield. And every time a ball got hit my way, everybody's yelling to me, come in three steps, go out three steps, go to your left, go to your right. (laughs) And one time, the ball hit the end of my glove and rolled off. And I guess I was fortunate it didn't hit me in the head, but I was so mad I didn't catch it. I never saw it. I put my glove out and uh, never caught it. But uh, Almost got it. Almost got it. (laughs) Well, usually if you do start to go to the wrong base, you've knocked about uh, you've added on about three seconds to your base time. Okay. So usually usually it means you're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, you know, we we do have some guys in the league who I think one guy was clocked at a four point two second base and the bases are a hundred feet from from home plate. So you feet. got some yep. yeah, you um you have some guys in the league that are just 
fast as fast can be. And then you got, mm-hmm. you know, old men like me out there. <laughs> who, uh, you know, if, if I can crack a five and a half second base, I'm doing great. I'm happy. So, you know, but uh, it's, it's a blast. It's, you know, it, somebody like me and, and I think John can, can, can get my drift and, and you guys probably can too, you know, when, when you're, you're out playing sports and you have that mm-hmm. competitiveness and it, and it's a stress reliever, yeah. And then, you know, I went through probably seven to 10 years of my life where I didn't, I didn't know of any adaptive sports mm-hmm. and, um, you know, you miss that competitive edge. And, right. and, uh, now, now it's just, it's, it's awesome to get out there and just rip and run and, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's good to come home and say, oh man, I'm sore. And, and uh, <laughs> you know, every, everybody like like our team is, is pretty much a, a family. We, um, yeah. you know, m- my daughters are out there playing, um, mm-hmm. um, their, their future husbands are out there. We're all on the same team. Yeah. You know, me and John have been, you know, best friends for the last 13 years. His, mm-hmm. his wife's out there, you know, um, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's, we got another couple that are on the, on the, on the team that, you know, and then their father's the coach and, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's, it's, we're a tight knit group. And, and even when we go out to, to other places, um, you know, that's what we look forward to is seeing everybody that we haven't seen in the last year or so, you know, getting together and hanging out and and just, you know, and and join, you know, like the, these NFB conventions, you know, everybody mm-hmm, gets together mm-hmm. and, and uh, it's good to see everybody again because everybody's mm-hmm. family, you know. The greatest part about this game, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I love winning and losing. We had a really nice season, or not winning and losing, but, you know. Yeah. Love- <laughs> and um, it is about winning and losing to a certain degree, but, but greater than that and the greatest thing is, for me at least, and the, the most value I've got out of it is, bringing a new person who had no idea existed and has maybe recently gone through some vision loss Mm -hmm. and just watching them come out and find this game and just feel like, okay, like I, I found something I can do now. Like this is really, we just had a, a a new girl who, um, you know, she's in her forties and she just recently got diagnosed with another, another RP. Um, and she came out to practice two or three weeks ago and she just, she had so much fun and that, that, that brings a lot of joy to me to be able to introduce the game to other people kind of going through the same struggles that, you know, I was in the past. Yeah. So you, you mentioned um, the blind sports organization and you're be under that umbrella. I was just looking quickly on the website and I saw uh, something there. There were very specific sort of requirements or guidelines as to visual impairment. Is that for all of the sports? In other words, um, you know, there's a certain acuity and uh, field vision, I think it mentioned. Is is yeah. that also germane to the um, Philly Fire? So each each organization, so we're part of the NBBA, which is the National Beep Baseball Association. Mm-hmm. They have their guidelines on what is visually impaired. You actually have to okay. get it completed and before you can play and certified. And then USABA. Um, regulates goal ball. So they have their own, uh, you know, w- what is required or considered legally blind. I don't know if they're exactly the same. I know they're close, mm-hmm. but so each kind of adaptive sport regulates, you know, what they consider to be um, legally blind. And Scott might actually know a little bit more about that, but that that's my understanding. So Scott, do you want to say what those are for Philly fire? Just for anyone out there wondering if they might, qualify honestly lee i i least i'm 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 not sure um, okay <laughs> <laughs> i kind of have I a feeling anybody wanna... listening to this <laughs> it would yeah, probably qualify yeah. you know yeah and, we and, we, and, we always don't know though who else is out there you know if, if, at least we hope we're outside of our bubble <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm gonna be honest. I think if there's somebody who's visually impaired and 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 to to the slightest, I mean, it's it's uh, you know we're we're in the position where if if you can't go out and play regular sports, we you, we want yeah. you to come out and play. But, right. Um, you know, even me. We, I mean, we play audio darts. I I used to mm-hmm. mold. 
you know, there's, uh-huh. there's all kinds of things that are out there. Golf. Um, yeah. you know, like John said, judo, I think there's actually sighted people that do play gold ball. I don't think they're allowed to play like Paralympics or anything like that, mm-hmm. but there's fully sighted people, I believe, who are allowed to to play gold ball. They just got to be blindfolded. Right. So, oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. The rule the rule for beat baseball is um, if you're not visually impaired, you don't re- meet that requirement. The only way you're able to play is if all of the visually impaired people on that team have been exhausted. Like, say, there's two or three injuries, mm-hmm. and then somebody to throw so that would be a case where a sighted person would go in and play otherwise it's it's strictly kind of carved out for the for the visually impaired and are you looking for new players always Mm -hmm. yep always looking for players and or volunteers anybody who wants to get involved we're we're always welcoming um we have a facebook page philadelphia fire beat baseball you can you can write a comment on there, message us. Um, we can share a lot of information with you. The requirements for beat baseball through the MBBA, um, mm-hmm. I believe, is a 2070 uh, right. or or worse. And I believe it's 30 degrees peripheral field, mm-hmm. uh, under 30 degrees peripheral field. And what we have to do to uh, every, well, not every year, but when you join, you have to get a vision form, take it to you know, your doctor, get it filled out. And, and once you do that, you get certified to, mm-hmm. to be able to play. And then you don't have to go through that process anymore either. That's so. a one-time thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So tell us the season's is just, just beginning. How's it going so far? It's going good. We, uh, we actually have been in the batting cages since, uh, about the Saturday after new year's. Mm-hmm. So we hit the batting cages January through March. Uh, we got outside on April 1st, and we practice once a week, like Scott said, uh, for about mm-hmm. three or four hours. Um, we have our first tournament uh, is on June 2nd through the 4th in Indianapolis, so we're looking forward to that. I'm actually not mm-hmm. going to make mm-hmm. the trip, unfortunately, because it's my son's first birthday. So, Oh, um, yeah. I think you better stay behind. I'm staying right? home for <laughs> If he knows what's good for him. Exactly. <laughs> so when you say you you went to the started in the batting cages, doing the same, I I have this in my mind when my daughter played softball uh, through high school, they did the batting cages and it's usually a pitching machine. You're not talking a pitching machine there though. Is that no, correct? We, we have our pitcher in there pitching to us so he can get practice because your pitcher is just as important. It's more important than this sport than in anything else. You need a pitcher who gets the timing down, hits your bat. I mean, it's kind of the what makes everything go. So mm-hmm. um, they just stand behind a cage. We're not able to really work on any defense then. It's it's just right. batting. Okay. Um, but it's good to kind of get the body, start to go in the motion, the muscles moving, and, um, you know, just hang out with everyone. for but th- Those sessions are only about an hour and a half, two hours. Okay. And where do you, what, where do, you do that? Where are the cages? Are they in Philadelphia somewhere? Yeah, South Philly, South Philadelphia Sports Training. Shout out to them for allowing us to use their uh, facilities. It's it's in South Philly. I think it's around 25th and Morris or something like that. Okay, I'll try and find it and I'll put a link in the show notes. And how about practice when you practice outdoors? Where where do you call your home field? We're in uh, Delaware County uh, in Norwood, PA. So Lower oh, wow. North Park. Okay. Uh, which is about, you know, maybe eight miles or so from like the sports complex, eight, nine miles, pretty, pretty close to the airport. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm based in Swarthmore, so I'm right in the heart of Delaware County. So uh, okay. that is very interesting. Okay. Uh, and once the tournaments start, and that's basically, you're not playing weekly games, you're doing tournaments throughout the summer. Is that how it works? Yes. Where are some of the other tournaments? We have one, or actually the, the one after that will be in Norwood. Um, we have teams from Boston, two teams from Boston, a team from New Jersey, Long Island coming down. That's the Beast of the East tournament. <laughs> and we we participate in that every year. That's actually a two-leg tournament. So the first leg is here in uh, Philly, you know, or Norwood. And then we'll go to Boston two weeks from that. And then the the July 30th through August 5th is the National Beat Baseball Association World Series. 
And that's actually held in a different location every year. And that's, that's a week long tournament. Um, it's going to be in Norman, Oklahoma this year. Mm-hmm. And that's the, that's the event that really, really got me hooked to the sport is just, you know, having all the camaraderie with all the people from all over the country in the similar circumstances, playing ball all week. That's just, I really look forward to it every single year. When you play in, let's start with the tournament that you're going to play in, in Indianapolis. So roughly six teams, eight teams in that, is that what you're saying? Scott, you can go ahead and explain that when you'll be there. Yeah, there's, um, there's eight teams in that tournament. Uh, we play, uh, it's two brackets. Uh, okay. We'll play. We'll play three games on Saturday. Um, our third game actually is a televised game on uh, Indianapolis TV, and mm. um, and then the championship game and the well, the each each uh, on Sunday morning you have the championship game. That's the the top two of each division will play each other in the championship, and then you know, the next two of each division to play for a third, fourth place and so on, just like that. And who determines the breakdown of the brackets? I, th- I think they're lottery. Uh, okay. They're kind of a lottery pick. I, th- I think some, some teams do it different. Some tournaments do it different. Most of the time it's, it's, it's a lottery drawing. And for the world series, I'm guessing there's a whole bunch more teams than eight. <laughs> yeah, we we hope to have 20 to 24 teams I think this year. Wow. And and just to just to let you know it's you know it's not just a a random thing. This is a statistical thing that we do um all year long. Every team has a representative that comes I think to to four or five meetings um to do a ranking call that we have um to make sure that we put the proper teams and the proper uh positions to to be as even as possible um like last year we finished fourth in the in the country and so we expect to be like a a higher seed this year um Mm -hmm. but that depends on you know how we do early on this year as well um because after each tournament we have a rankings call and we talk about players that we might not have had extra players that some teams might have had and um you know they do a number system and and they rank us one through 24 and uh and that's how we begin we begin on tuesday with the round robin play Mm -hmm. and then starting on wednesday of that week we do a double elimination until the finals and uh last year was the first year that that me and john ever ever uh played three games on a Friday. So that was a great oh feeling. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We were, <laughs> we, us, us as older guys, you know, we were a little tired, <laughs> by it, you know, but, uh, but hopefully we could get some new blood in to give us a little yeah. bit of rest early in the week. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. and then maybe we can move forward, but we, the, we would love to get on that podium in the top three spots yeah. this year. Last year, the Indy Thunder won the, the championship, uh, 20, mm-hmm. 16, 27, oh, yeah. 2018, 2019, wow. 2021, and last year we eliminated them from the from oh, wow. series. Yes, we did. Good yes, for we you. Did. <laughs> yes, we did. We didn't, I'm glad you threw that in there, John. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't win the championship. We ended up losing our next one. Another team won, but we knocked the champs out. So, nice. now, Are the games, are they typical nine-inning games? Six innings. Six game. innings. Okay. Yeah. Typically, yeah. how many runs are scored in a game? Like, give me an example so, of finals. Final scores. Well, you 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 have you have different scenarios. Um, you know, some teams can can really blast them. Um, and and put up, you know, fifteen to twenty runs a game. And 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 some teams who who aren't developed as much and hadn't got the practice as much, you know, could be you know four or five runs a game. Uh, it just depends on okay. uh, the the teams, yeah. And uh, and we the Philly Fire we got lucky um, two years ago. Our 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 short left defender, his dad, um, came out and and became he was a rookie pitcher last year and, and he dedicated so much time and so much work and so much effort to make all of us better. I think he was the third ranked pitcher in the world series last year. 
Wow. Wow. Yeah. Awesome guy. Shout out to, if you guys don't mind, I'd love to mention, mm-hmm. um, I'd love to mention Pat Krause, uh, our pitcher, uh, Mike Ricardo, our, our catcher, our mm-hmm. coach, Jeff Rhymes. Um, we got two mothers on the team, Carol Rhymes and Francis Krause. Uh, we got spotters, uh, Camry Hogwood, Lexus Hogwood. Uh, John, help me out if I'm missing anybody. Three, please. three others on the team. Gina. <laughs> uh, Gina yeah, G- Gina, she, she's on the sidelines helping us out. Hopefully she's coming back this year. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, this isn't possible with without our volunteers. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we, we can't play the game by ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they put just as much time and effort, you know, into this as, as we do. And, and I think a lot of them get out of it just as much as we do as well. That's a good segue for us to put it out there again. I don't know which one of you wants to take this, but how can people support you, um, whether or not they want to play, volunteer, or even donate? Probably just answered the question for you, but, you know, feel free, <laughs> feel free to plug away. Yeah, so you take the first leg. <laughs> if um if if you want to follow us or get in touch with us, again, the main way to do that is on Facebook uh okay. at Philadelphia Fire Beat Baseball. Um you oh. can message the page. We actually stream all of our games live from that page. So if oh, you wow. just if you just like and follow the page, mm-hmm. when we have tournaments, you'll just see a video pop up and it'll be our games. Oh cool. Um, yeah, and if you're if you're interested in you know volunteering or playing, reach to, out to us that way. Uh, if you'd like to donate, you can just go to blindsports.org uh, or the Blind Sports Organization page. There is a link to donate via PayPal, I believe. Um, yeah, I saw or, that up at the top. It's the top right hand corner of the page. Yep, yep. And you can put, just put a memo in your donation if you'd like to for it strictly to go to beat baseball. Just mention Philly Fire or beat baseball or, or, you know, just get in touch with us through the, through the, the page and we'll walk you through. If you'd like to send a physical check, we can provide that address and things like that. So there's, there's multiple ways to kind of donate if you're interested in doing that. So they basically handle the administrative end of things. Uh, is that, is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> uh, I wish. <laughs> oh. <laughs> to a to a certain to a certain degree, but I I am a I am a board member of the blind sports organization. Okay. So I am okay. kind of two and one. I'm on the team and doing that. Our, our coach our coach Jeff Rhines uh, is the treasurer. So we're kind of all okay. Intertwined. Uh, but they they help us when we have events and come down and volunteers. But the day to day stuff we kind of you know handle all that stuff, booking the hotels and. Mm-hmm. and and getting all that set up and, you know, coordinating people's flights and things like that, because again, we're going to far distances. We kind of handle most of that internally. Do players typically pay their way when for that, for example, the tournament in Indianapolis, do they pay their own way? Do they get support somehow? How does that all work out? Yeah, so it really all depends on how much um, we raise. We do all kinds mm-hmm. of different fundraisers. We have, um, a few sponsors as well. Uh, so if, if, you know, depends on how much money we raise that year, typically if our goal is to raise enough to pay for volunteers first and foremost, mm-hmm. um, their flights and lodging. And then if we raise enough, we'll, we'll aim to pay for our players lodging as well. And the players will usually cover, their own transportation, whether it's flight or if we get a van, you know, we'll say everybody has to chip in so much for gas and things like that. But there are some resources out there to help players. There's a, there's a grant that most of us apply for called the challenge athletes fund grant um, every year. And as long as you're, you know, you're playing actively and you're saving your receipts, you know, that, that can help out a little bit with all those expenses. Is there an urgent need for, donations or players like what's is is there an urgent need in any category the one the one huge huge thing lisa is our volunteers okay. um everybody that's coming out there they're they're coming out on their own dime um right. to help us out that's that's a huge 
huge right. thing that that we can always use and and appreciate just mm-hmm. to make sure you know our volunteers aren't having to come out of their pockets to go on trips to help us play this sport mm-hmm. um like john said earlier you know me and john are a little bit older we're we're a little bit different if 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 I have to sacrifice something to make sure that a volunteer doesn't have to pay, that's what we'll do. Mm-hmm. But we're always, always looking for for donations, sponsorship, even if it's ten dollars, fifty dollars, whatever it is, mm-hmm. it's going to 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 players who are in different positions who who may be on social security benefits or 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 not able to find work but they want to come out and play ball and, right. and, and especially our volunteers who, you know, are dedicating a lot of time, a lot of time. I can't imagine, you know, um, you know, at least 26 weeks at three to four hours a week. That's a lot of time that they're volunteering to do this sure. for, for us. And, and that that's what we, we definitely want to make sure we take care of is our volunteers to help us play the sport. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very well between, said just vehicle rentals and things like that. Like this trip, the world series of beat baseball is, is is an amazing rewarding trip. Like I said, but on average each year, um, it runs us about 15,000, about $20,000. So Mm -hmm. without fundraising, without sponsorships, without us doing everything, it's, it's impossible. So any and all donations are, are very, very much appreciated to, uh, to help our volunteers and allow us to play this game that we love so much. And, and, and I don't think that price tag tag is going to get any cheaper anytime. Yeah. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and, and for this sport to exist, you know, we, it's, it's, it's huge. We, um, yeah. y- you know, m- money is, is, is tough. It's, it's yeah. tough to come by for everybody. And, and, and even if we're able to, to, uh, get sponsors. We'll we'll put their logos on our jerseys. Mm-hmm. We'll we'll put their names on the fields we play on. We'll you know we'll do anything we can. And then we also do a lot of fundraisers and any support we can get when we throw fundraisers up on the website. Um, you know we'd love to have people come out and support. The money's going to a good cause, and uh, and it and it's all greatly appreciated. Yeah. And feel free to keep us informed of any fundraising efforts and we'll do our best to spread the word. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that very much. So you had mentioned there's six players in the field. How many players are there on the team total? Usually an average team is about 10 to 12 players and usually about what, John, eight to 10 volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere in that range. Some of the bigger teams have up to 20 players and some of the teams that are struggling a bit more might only have eight or nine, but you need, you need at minimum nine because that, that week is a grueling week. It's not, if somebody's Mm going to get hurt, it's when. (laughs) And, and, and with that being said too, you know, teams are all across the country. Some teams get, get, different sponsorship from their state organizations and stuff like that. And, and basically any money that we get is, is putting our feet on the ground and, and earning it. And, you know, it just, even if you, you get enough for this year, it doesn't mean you're going to have enough for next year. So that's Mm -hmm. kind of a, kind of a never ending cycle. So, you know, we just, and and we just appreciate any any assistance that we get from anywhere. Just following up on that, so th- only the six people who are playing the field, like regular baseball, only those six bat, or does that is it different? You you can actually utilize uh, what's called a DHDF. So you have one player that bats in one spot, and that player doesn't field, and that person just goes out and fields. So somebody might be a stronger batter, and the other person might be better on defense. So you could technically have seven people playing at once, but you can also pull people in and out during the game. You can make substitutions. If if somebody comes out, though, they have to sit out for six outs before going back in. So basically okay. one full inning. So the best way to reach you guys is through the Facebook page, which I'll put a link in the show notes so that we have that. Uh, mm-hmm. Is there any other way that you want to be contacted or is that the best way? I would say that's the best way. I, I can give you my cell phone number. People are more than willing to or 
you know, it's okay if people want to give me a call or a text. I'm I'm totally fine with that, and I can pass on any information that they would like. Why don't you give that? So my cell phone number is four eight four nine eight eight two three seven seven, and my name is John Margis. Whether you want to volunteer, play. Um, donate, I can I can send you in the right direction if you give me a call or text that way as well. And are there other teams in Pennsylvania? Is it just the Philadelphia no. Fire? Or there's there's no other teams, okay. Just the Philadelphia Fire. And I would like to to say too, um, the MBBA, we we do have now a, a wool, which is the women of our league. Mm-hmm. We also have a cool, which is the kids of our league. Um we this year we're actually gonna have the first all women's team who have registered for uh, the World Series this year. Oh, wow. Um, So we, any visually impaired person, Mm -hmm. no matter what, no matter what they think their skill set is, you know, come out, hang out with us, be around people who are, who are in the same situation that they are, you know, and, and, and know that it's women out, there's kids out, we have different different programs for 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 other people, whoever wants to be wherever, and uh, mm-hmm. we just want as many people to come out and and enjoy this game like we do. Well, I think it sounds like a lot of fun. I don't don't know how much stamina I personally would have, but <laughs> I applaud you guys for representing the uh, older athletes out there. <laughs> so, so where are you guys from in Pennsylvania? I'm I'm in Southwest Philly. South, mm-hmm. Southwest Philly. And mm-hmm. how about you, Dave? Swarthmore in Delaware County. You guys are both oh, very so, close. Oh my July. Very close. Very close. So yeah, I think July uh, first, you guys need to come out and try to swing a bat <laughs> and put some blindfolds on. What do you think of that? Come on. I would love I I gotta be honest. When I was talking to Johnny Lynn today, I thought, man, that would be fun to do. I, I loved baseball my whole that life. Fun. And I've been visually impaired my whole life, and yet I still tried. And my parents said, "Yeah, you want to do that? Go ahead." <laughs> and fortunately, nothing too crazy ever happened to me. But I, I, I would love to give it a try. Yeah, come on out, come on out. We'd love anytime, to have you come out and check it out. Yep, anytime to practice, and you know, even if anybody's not interested in necessarily playing, or they just want to see the game, you can watch practice, or you know, if you want to see the game truly played at a, at a mm-hmm. high com- level locally that that mm-hmm. tournament on july 1st at uh norwood park which is two, okay. two 270 east winona avenue norwood pa 19074 i uh, will be having a few games there that day against teams from all up and down the east coast i think the first the first game on that day is the fourth place team which is us against I think they finished sixth last fifth. year in the World Series, fifth in the World Series last year. So so that's the Philadelphia Fire against the Boston Renegades. And uh and and that's gonna be a highly competitive ball game. And and then um, you know, you got another team, the New Jersey Titans. They they kinda uh had to get some things together, but they're back in, in the mix this year and uh it's a lot of good competitive ball out there. That sounds All awesome. right, folks. Well, you heard it. July 1st sounds like a, a date. John, Scott, wonderful talking with both of you. Thank you so much for coming on. And we're we're hoping that this gets some people out there who are literally sitting on the sidelines or the benches to uh, kind of get more involved. We would yeah. love it. And thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. And thank you, Dakota. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks again to John and Scott for stopping by and giving us all the information on the Philadelphia Fire and Beep Baseball. Lisa, it sounds like a lot of fun. It really does. And I just so enjoy hearing the enthusiasm in Scott's voice. Uh, you could tell he's been doing it for a while, but it doesn't seem to be getting old. No, definitely not. And it's exciting to know that they'll be having that tournament close by. If you're in Delaware County or Philadelphia in Norwood uh, starting July 1st, It would be great to stop over there and see how things go. I'd love to uh, check that out. So I definitely will be going over there. Yeah. And uh, again, I said it in the show, but we're we're so thankful that Dakota brought the team to our attention. They were were great. It was great talking to both of those guys. Absolutely. So what's coming up with us? So the Keystone chapter is 
gearing up, pardon the pun, for their spin fundraiser mm-hmm. on May 6th. I like 6th. that pun. <laughs> it's May 6th at the Cycle Bar Center City, Philadelphia at 1521 Locust Street. It's $25 and you get a 45-minute spin class. It's our second annual event at Cycle Bar Center City. So if you're in the Philadelphia area and would love to sweat a little bit on the 6th of May, click the link in the show notes, take you to the payment page, and you can pay. And we'll see you at Cycle Bar at 1 p.m. on the 6th of May. Lisa's doing it. I will be there. I will not be riding for a few dozen reasons, but I will be there. (laughs) I'll be taking some pictures and some videos. So please, if you're not busy that day. Stop out and see us. I'm looking forward to it. This for me is a little fancier spin studio. So there was a little adjusting for me to do, but I but I love spinning. It's one of my safest <laughs> forms of activity when it comes to working out. Right. Certainly not riding around out on the street. So uh, a lot safer You're there. Stationary. And- and do you like the, I guess you like the music, the pounding of the music and, and all that. I do. In fact, I have been collecting a playlist that I want to submit to them. Is going back to Indiana on that list? No, it is not. <laughs> that's not, that's not a good spin song. But okay. I, got, I got some good ones that okay. I, I'm hoping they'll, they'll play at least a few of them. Well, we'd love to hear from you. If you have any kind of tips, questions, comments, show ideas, please reach out. You can call us at 267-338-4495. You have up to three minutes to leave your question, comment, show idea, whatever you got. Please do leave your name in town. If you do leave a voicemail, and we will play it on an upcoming episode. Again, 267-338-4495. And you can always email us. Is that the old-fashioned way nowadays? (laughs) At whitecanesconnect at gmail.com. You could probably send us a letter too, but email is a lot easier. But we'd love to hear from you. So reach out whichever way works for you. Lisa, it was great to get to know the Philadelphia Fire and Beat Baseball. And just sounds like a lot of fun. I'm glad we had those guys on. Yes. Thanks for coming on, guys. And thank you all for listening. Thanks for listening. Take care. <laughs>